We want to invite our administrative team to come on up. Is that right? I do. I want okay. them to come and join our me. Our president, secretary, treasurer, come on up. Debbie's going to ask you some questions, and uh, we look forward to this time. You're right beside me. You know, for conference happenings with Debbie, I usually have the administrators at least one time. And tonight, because we were behind a little bit, I decided we would do it live, and we would do it right here and now. So, welcome to the administrators. You all know them, right? Do I need to introduce them? To my left is Pastor Gary Hodder, the president. In the middle. <laughs> is Pastor Wayne Williams, the Executive Secretary and VP for Administration. And down at the end, you all know Keith Richter. He is the CFO and Treasurer of the Alberta Conference. So gentlemen, I thought I would ask you just a couple of questions each. And I'm gonna start with Keith. I'm gonna ask all of you the same question. Keith, I want to know what has been the best thing about being here at camp meeting this year? Wow, there's uh, so many things. Um, it started, I'll say it's the journey. Uh, from the time you drive on the camp and all the grass is meticulously cut, and I thank Rachel for that, uh, to see all the flowers and the uh, arrangements uh, throughout the camp, uh, the landscaping, uh, the beautiful memorial garden mm -hmm. that's just outside. Uh, we've got so many uh, comments on that. Um, you know, it was a wonderful gift uh, that uh, was given to us. Um, and uh, Dorothy and Ted Proud, they put their time, their effort, and their resources into making that garden. Uh, and I noticed, I noticed last night, because I was up very late, I noticed that it has lights in it at night. And so it was beautiful last night in the darkness. Yes. Yeah, and um, uh, Kathy has done a wonderful job with the arrangements that are around the camp. And uh, I think both Roland and her are the kid's hero. Uh, if anyone has seen the new sandbox yes, yes. That, uh, that is out there and with the sailboat in it, uh, the children have really enjoyed uh, that, that part of the camp. They sure have. Okay, are you and, finished? You're not finished, well, okay. There, there's two other things that uh, have been highlights for me at this camp, and that is uh, how hard everyone has worked being short of resource, uh, human resources here, from the camp staff to the pastors to the office, just everybody and all the volunteers, the volunteers in the divisions, and those who seen we were short and, and came to help us during the week, including those on the camera. Yes, we've had a lot of wonderful volunteers helping, and, and like I said earlier, the staff have been great, the staff across the, the whole conference. Yes, it, it's just remarkable to see how everyone has chipped in. And then, le last but not least, is just to see everybody again, all together. That was a particular highlight. Okay, I'm going to go to Wayne this time. What were your thoughts about camp meeting? Um, oh, wow. It's just been amazing being here again after two years of uh, absence from the campground and from each and every one of you. Um, for me, the best part of camp for me is the membership. Each and every one of you that I've met along the way. Um, it's been amazing to see the children, the energy of families, to see our members moving around and relaxing and talking and sitting around the fireplace um, in the evening um, and sharing a meal. I was on security uh, at one point and just stumbled upon a group. Uh, I believe they're from Lethbridge. 
Uh, I think so. And um, they gave me some foods and some tea. And I sat there and I was just blessed and warmed, not simply by the tea, but by the fellowship as well. It was just amazing. Um, on security again, I really want to highlight the security. They have been amazing, um, but the people. When I was working security one evening, I'll say quickly, um, a mother and daughter came in and um, they came in a bit late to check in and they were wondering if their rooms were ready and so on and so forth. And so I went over to help them unpack uh, their stuff. So mommy was in the front seat and she was very tired because they were driving very long. And um, she's an older woman and not as mobile as uh, perhaps um, as she once was. And she was there sleeping and on and off. So I unpacked the stuff with, with her daughter, went to the room. The daughter was preparing the bed. I was moving the things back and forth to get to the room. And then finally pushed mommy with uh, the daughter up the ramp in her wheelchair to the room in the main lodge. When coming out of her wheelchair beside the bed, she said to me, um, she whispered something to me and I couldn't make it out so I drew a bit closer and I heard her say, hug. And I said, oh, how cute. She wants a hug from me but what she really wanted me to do is hug her and lift her out of the wheelchair. <laughs> so I went in for the hug and she grabbed on to me and started lifting herself up. And I said, oh, okay, I know what I'm supposed to do. So as she rose up out of her wheelchair, I was there in this embrace. <laughs> and it was reminiscent maybe of, of, of a dance. So I said, I said, can I have this dance? <laughs> and she just kind of knocked me. And, and, uh, and she was just absolutely wonderful. But just to have that interaction, Priceless, priceless. Your turn. Sure. Well, I would say similar to what has been said already. Uh, obviously, one of the fun things at camp is a time for reunion. Uh, a lot of people have not seen each other in, in two and a half, three years. And uh, to see so many little groups mm -hmm. here and there meet and talk and chat and and make their way to the auditoriums in the evening and so forth is such fun to see. I know personally, I've had the privilege of uh, pastoring several congregations here in Alberta, and it's always particular, particularly fun to meet uh, previous members. I see Madison Hat represented, I see uh, uh, Sylvan Lake represented, and I see Edmonton represented, and, and they, to see the young boys that when I was a youth pastor who are now not young boys. They have kids who are young boys. <laughs> and so that's fun to see. Uh, I would also say that one of the things that I, I it, it brings a sense of joy to your heart is when you see not only the adults enjoy this time of getting together, but the young people. Mm -hmm. I went over to the, uh, I go, I, I make the rounds, you know, to the tents and all of that. And I was over to, I think it's Primary B, and uh, they have put so much water on those uh, inflatables over there that they're turning it into a wallow. And, uh, but the kids are having a wonderful time. And, uh, and the number of youth this year who have stayed by and been on the uh, evenings is just uh, wonderful to behold. Sometimes in, in years gone by, we would have, you know, 60 or so. Uh, down in the youth tent this year is like 140, you know, that kind of stuff. It's just amazing to see uh, how people have come together. The other thing is, I wasn't sure if anyone would come. You know, uh, we, we've been a while since we had a camp meeting. And I know there's a lot of people with uh, still very concerned and so forth. And uh, I didn't know who would show. But a lot of people have come. And uh, so that's a great thing uh, to see. So those are some of the things I've enjoyed. And we're glad you're all here. And we're still here, even with that storm this afternoon and a bit of rain. Okay, we're going to go to a little bit more serious now. And I just wanted to ask each of you, from your perspective and your position, can you share one or two things that represent your departments 
and how you hope to move the conference forward. So this might be your wishes and goals. I'm going to start with Keith again. I was hoping reverse order. <laughs> It'll only be fair. <laughs> uh, one of the things that we really uh, focused on uh, this constituency uh, session was uh, on education. Uh, we have uh, really helped our schools along. At uh, one point, uh, the schools owed the conference just shy of 2.9 million. And uh, so we've been working with the schools. We've been matching a lot of funds uh, with uh, the schools. And uh, earlier this spring, we were down to as low as 400,000 at one point. Uh, in our receivables from the school, so uh, a tremendous progress on that. And uh, with the government on our financial reporting, we, in the last three years, we went from a deficit of, of around 1.3 million to, uh, to where we're in the black right now. So we made tremendous progress. Thank you for that. Do you have and any, another one? Yes, we have, over this uh, session period, we've spent about a million dollars helping uh, churches get into buildings. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have also set aside, we probably have another half million set aside already to help further congregations uh, with that. So uh, uh, that is another goal that we have uh, going forward. That's a, a huge goal, and, but it's attainable. It seems like it's very attainable. Pastor Williams. Yes. What would you like to tell the members? Well, um, I'm excited for, uh, for the Alberta Conference um, because even though COVID has tr attempted to ravage our churches and our way forward, um, God has blessed us despite those challenges. Um, we have not um, lost in terms of tithing and offering. It's been positive. Um, God is blessed with that. But also the membership in particular. While it hasn't been as robust a growth, and we understand why, because baptisms had to be averted at some point in time during the heights of the pandemic. Um, however, um, our growth has been steady, and we have not... Um, been declining in where that is concerned and we are still second in the overall scheme um, of the conferences of th throughout the union in that um, we have been growing and we appreciate that our membership to date right now is about 12,336 and perhaps a little bit more by the end of this camp meeting I believe we have some baptisms we do and so we might well be by the end of the year hopefully closer to 13,000 or more um, so it's a very exciting times in which we're living in that way uh, so that's one of the things that has been happening that we keep our eyes on um, one of the things that I am um, passionate about and have been giving much prayer and thought to is um, our apostate member, members. Um, it's a problem worldwide for our organization, for our church. Uh, we gain members every three to four seconds uh, uh, worldwide, and we lose members every four to five seconds approximately. So the, we retain, we grow, but we don't retain enough because we have individuals that are uh, leaving the church through the back doors, and we want to help to find a way going forward to help to retain our members and to regain our members. So the missing members is a burden um, that I have, and I know that concerns all of us in our churches, our family members and friends. Uh, it's so important uh, to regain the trust and the relationship of those that have actually left the church, and uh, our prayers and hearts go out to them. Um, education, of course, uh, sustainability, uh, availability, and uh, attainability. I think um, Keith spoke a little bit about the sustainability, about the finances and, the, and what it means to get the assistance and the support uh, to make our, our finances work. 
but also availability that we would really like to continue to see education uh, available to our members, our children, so that the values of uh, our um, faith can continue to be shared and the principles of our beliefs can, can continue to be a part of their um, education and that be etched into their being and that indeed uh, we, can, we can share this not just with our members but also the world and the community in which we live in and it's very critical. Evangelism comes out of not only the churches but also our schools which is a very critical and vital part. Finally, um, I do have a burden and the administration as well uh, to see all of us would like to uh, continue to help our rural churches with resources and with help as they continue to grow, to help them to uh, experience growth and to, to be uh, stabilized and um, to give them as much help as possible. Thank you, Pastor Williams. Pastor Hodder. Sure. Uh, obviously, uh, we, we've certainly put a lot of focus into uh, allowing and, and providing for evangelism and the fact that our churches uh, continue to grow. Our conference continues to grow. Even during COVID, we had small growth, which we weren't sure of. And as, as Keith indicated, uh, people were very faithful in, in giving and tithes and so forth. And, and that was, uh, was obviously a very pleasant uh, a thing that took place for us. I would just add a couple of things that took a lot of our time during the last few years. Uh, one thing was uh, Berman asked us to take responsibility for PAA. And uh, PAA, there was a time when that was a Western Canada school. You know, it service the high school for all the Western provinces. But as the years have gone by, of course, BC has high schools, and we do, and Mansas does, so PAA became more of a regional school. So they asked us to take it over, and uh, it took us a, a two or three years to work all of that out, and working with the various boards and the constituencies, and figuring out how all that would work, and. Uh, so forth, but I, I will say this, uh, people have rallied to the cause. And uh, if you haven't seen PAA, well you would have on some of the pictures and, and many of you who are local, it's a beautiful facility. Uh, the, the enrollment at PAA over the previous number of years have been in a state of decline and I think we picked it up with about 40 kids. And uh, then it went our first year with 50. Now we have like 75 registered for the fall. And uh, we, we built it for 120. And so uh, we're hopeful that uh, in a couple more years we can get those numbers where they need to be. But it's a big project, but people participated and supported it and it went. Another area, of course, as you've heard, especially last weekend, is continued support for the First Nations work. That's been a big thing when, when we started this last term uh, as officers, uh, the uh, new high school was just in the construction phase. And so it was, uh, it was really satisfying to see that that school got completed over the next year or two and the level of support and funding that costs uh, in excess of $5 million on nearly six and uh, within, within a very short time, Keith, two years, three years, something like that, the whole thing was paid off. And uh, so Adventists are very supportive uh, of, of assisting. Now, of course, we want to try and get a, a new, a new uh, center, the, uh, is what we, we call it, the Atascotan Center, there on the reserve, which will be a place for multi uh, activities, worship, but it will also include health programs, all sorts of things that will go on there. And uh, we're in the process of making the plans and we just launched a campaign late last weekend and uh, the church at large, the North American Division, allows you 15 years to pay for a project. And uh, I'm just optimistic that the folk here in Alberta will respond and it will not take us 15 years. 
Uh, if our track record holds, I'm hopeful within five. And uh, so uh, God will lead there. So those are some of the things. We have mentioned all the great things. There was one sad note in that we've lost one of our uh, pastors uh, from now, from then, just before COVID till now, uh, Ralph Allison, and we miss him very much. I, I, I've walked the grounds here during our workers' camp and, uh, and just miss his input. And so, but uh, we have a great group of people, wonderful pastors, very supportive, very, uh, very much in fellowship with one another. And so we have a lot to be grateful for. Okay, I thank you all. Do you have any closing remarks? Yeah, I mean, all I would say is that uh, we really don't have a lot uh, to fear, you know, for the future, as long as we remember, you know, the great things that God has done for us and uh, continues to do. And uh, I have every confidence that uh, God will bless this conference in such a way that we can share the gospel. We heard it presented again in a unique way last night uh, with, uh, with uh, Professor Pauline. I think we're in a unique position to be able to share the gospel in this, uh, in, this in, in our particular case, Alberta is our responsibility. But uh, yeah, I think we have wonderful members. Uh, people have a focus, have a sense of vision, have a sense of purpose, and I believe God will bless. I want to thank the administration for being here with me as we've done this uh, conference happenings with Debbie for the last time for Camp Meeting 2022, except for the video tonight. I would ask if Pastor Hodder, you would have just a short prayer so that we can go on to our next part. Certainly. Our Father in heaven, as we've reviewed the way you have uh, been blessing and some of the uh, things that uh, you have brought uh, before us to see through to completion, we're just grateful for your Spirit's leading and guiding in the lives of each person here. And together we form an unbroken chain uh, that will see us through to the kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very much.